If you're a woman in the Church of Christ, this message is for you. But if you're not, please stay as our honored guest. All women are welcome to you. Today we'll answer the question, do you have a telephone pole in your eye? When I was around six or seven years old, my brother and I got to be on a Saturday morning TV show in Atlanta, Georgia. It was so much fun. There was an adult who was always on the show and they invited children to come and play games and interact with the host. When it was time to cut to a cartoon, the kids would all yell, let's go Popeye. <laughs> I love that show. We watched it every Saturday morning. My favorite part was when they played the hokey pokey. There was a large hat rack on the set with all kinds of oversized whimsical hats. Before the song began, the children would all run over and pick a hat and run to the circle to join hands ready for the song to begin. It looked like so much fun, but in every show, there was always one child who spent the whole song standing at the hat rack because they couldn't decide which hat to wear. The camera would pan across to the children in the circle having a great time, then pan back to that confused poor child left frozen at the hat rack. Well, I just thought that was the stupidest thing that I had ever seen. Here they were on TV with hundreds of kids watching them, and they just stood there staring at that stupid hat rack? I mean, how ridiculous can you be? How stupid can you look? It's just a hat. Pick one already. So every Saturday morning, I would find myself in my living room screaming at my TV, just pick a hat. You're missing the hokey pokey. Now it was my turn to be on the show and play the hokey pokey. It was so exciting. There were cameras everywhere and other kids to play with. I loved it. That is until it came time to do the hokey pokey. Now in my defense, I had looked carefully at that hat rack before we were to play and I picked out just the right hat. It was yellow with a large brim and lots of the prettiest flowers that you'd ever seen on it. It matched my dress, and I was going to look amazing in that hat for all the kids at home to see. It would be my TV debut, and I was going to be great. So we yelled, let's go Popeye. They went to the cartoon, and we were told to get our hats and get ready for the hokey pokey. Now, I can see you smiling. I can hear you laughing. <laughs> You figured it out already, haven't you? Yep. Some other girl beat me to the hat rack, got my hat, and I spent the whole song staring at a bunch of ugly hats I did not want to wear. I could just feel the kids at home screaming at me to choose a hat. You're missing the hokey pokey. But I just couldn't move. You know, I learned something that day. Sometimes life is not as easy as it seems from the outside looking in. Now, when I was at home, I could not understand why that child would spend the whole time at the hat rack. But that day, I knew. Did you know that scripture has a hat rack? It does. But for God, it's not hats or song. It's a speck and a log. Or, as I like to say, a telephone pole. The English Standard Version of Matthew 7, 3, and 4 says, Why do you see the speck in your brother's eye and do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, Let me take that speck out of your eye, when there's a log in your own eye? These were Jesus' words. He was frustrated with those that are so focused on the sins of others, they do not even see their own over-the-top sin. It's easy to see what others are doing wrong, or at least what you think they are doing wrong, but it's much more difficult to see our own sins. In the verse just above these, Christ warns that whatever measuring stick we use to measure others will be the measure or standard that we will be held to. Now for some of us, that should be a very scary thought. Matthew 7-2 for with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. 
It was easy for me to scream at those children on the TV set to just pick a hat. But when it was my turn, I became painfully aware that life is not as simple as we would like it to be. It's different when we are the one who is facing trials and temptations. You know, I've even heard it said that Christians are not allowed to judge, and many will quote this scripture, but they've missed the point. When we compare the lives of others to scripture, we are not judging. We must do this to know who is lost and who is saved, who needs help and who is growing. No, judging is when we compare ourselves to other humans. When we use ourselves as a measuring stick, Christ is basically saying, okay, you expect them to live up to your standards. Let's see how well you will do when I measure you with the very, very same standards. Now, in my seven-year-old mind, there was absolutely no excuse for standing at that hack rat the whole time. It was stupid, embarrassing, and ridiculous. I would never do something as lame as that. Just let me on that show and I'll show them what to do. But did I? The old saying, walk a mile in their shoes, comes to mind. We've all set standards that we've set for ourselves, goals we've set, things we put at the top of our most important list. But here's the thing, my list may not be the same as yours. Now, I'm not talking about scripture. I'm talking about matters of opinion. I'm talking about human priorities, goals, and how we react during a crisis. When I look at others and say, I would never do that, or that's stupid, why don't they just, or even well, when I have that problem, I, we are using ourselves as a measuring stick, and God will measure us that same way. Am I scaring you? I hope so. We all need to be afraid. So ask yourself these questions. How kind are you? Do you give others the benefit of the doubt or are you constantly angry and frustrated with others because they're not doing it the right way, which is really your way? I get it. Did you know that there are actually people in the world who do not make their beds every morning? I know, it takes just a few minutes and it's important. Wait, you don't make your bed every day? Well, what about cleaning your kitchen every night? I have heard that there are people that will go to bed with dirty dishes in their sink. Yuck. Wait, you do that? Well, what about driving? Did you know that there are people that get in their cars every morning and do five miles an hour under the speed limit? I mean, come on, people. I'm late. Get a move on. Let's go. Hmm. So some of you don't know the speed limit or maybe even a little over when you drive? Well, what about how you spend your money or your free time? Do you spank your kids? Really? Do you leave your house dirty when you go out? Or do you go out in public without any makeup on? Do you take a bath every day? Are you always on time? <laughs> I think you get my point. We've all stood at the TV and yelled, pick a hat, you're missing the hokey pokey. Until it's our turn to do that dance, then it's different. If you want mercy, my sister, you must give mercy. Don't try to take that speck from your sister or brother's eye until you know for sure that you are seeing clearly. Remember, when you set the standard for them, Christ says that you are also setting the standard for yourself. I can tell you that from a personal standpoint, there are things that I once felt were critical when I was young that don't seem quite so important to me today. Opinions change, but God's word never does. So that's why his word is our standard, not what we do or think. Thankfully, his standard is love. Now that's one I think we can all be grateful to be measured by. I pray you'll give my message from God's word some serious thought and prayer. Please pray for me and with me as we take this journey called Life Together. If you want to know more about me, how to order my latest Bible study book or video, please check out my website. The address will appear at the end of this message. Ladies, 
I love our time together each week. So until we are together again, never forget that God loves you and so do I.